Backup and recovery remains one of the most pressing challenges for IT practitioners. Protecting data from human error, disasters, accidental deletion, and many other unforeseen events has vexed IT pros for decades. For many years, tape was the primary method of protecting data. And while tape had some advantages, most notably its removability, as a sequential medium, recovery from tape was very slow and painful for many, if not most, use cases. And what's more, rapid data growth in the last several years has really stressed backup windows considerably, causing a lot of data sets to frankly go unprotected. And this is particularly problematic because practitioners have observed that most recoveries, 90% at least, are for files that are less than 24 hours old. As such, in the early 2000s, disk-based backup began to take shape, first in the form of virtual tape libraries, or VTL. And then over the next decade, we've seen this technology evolve to become the dominant platform for backup and recovery. Now the key inflection point came in the mid part of the 2000s with the steep adoption of data deduplication. This trend has catalyzed a new class of devices that is known as purpose-built backup appliances. The name kind of says it all. Now IDC has this market pegged at 3.8 billion this year in 2012. That's larger than the entire tape business and it's growing at a whopping 26% CAGR from 2010 to 2015. And during the decade of the 2000s, EMC made three acquisitions starting in 2003 with Legato, then in 2006 with Avamar, and then the blockbuster, $2.4 billion acquisition in 2009 of Data Domain. And this trio of assets has combined to give EMC a very dominant position in backup generally, and in purpose-built backup appliances specifically. The company has more than 60% of the market and more than 40 share points relative to its closest competitor. Now interestingly, disk-based backup is still often a premium priced product relative to tape, yet tape, despite its lower cost, is being largely relegated to an archive and last resort compliance medium. So how is it that disk-based backup has exploded onto the scene so fast? How has EMC gained such a foothold in the market with roughly twice the market share in backup that it sees in its core disk business? Is that dominant number one position sustainable and what does the future hold for disk-based backup and recovery? Hello everyone, this is Dave Vellante of Wikibon and welcome to Running Data, a production of theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's live programming that brings you all the major developments in cloud, big data, and converged infrastructure. And today I'm here with Rob Emsley and Michael Wilkie, directors of product marketing for EMC's backup and recovery Systems Division, BRS. Rob and Michael, welcome to theCUBE. Hello, Dave. Thanks very much for taking the time here. So, Rob, I'm going to start with you. Did you predict this massive explosion? i got to be honest with you, Dave. I think that, um, you know, the size of the market and how quickly it has evolved is, um, you know, has, has been a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people. You know, I think certainly, um, you know, we've been in the uh, disk-based backup business for a number of years. And certainly, you know, you mentioned back in, uh, early 2000s, you know, 2003, 2004, you know, was when you know virtual tape libraries came onto the market, and you may remember that, you know, that was kind of after the acquisition of Data General, you know, which brought Clarion into our portfolio, and one of the biggest use cases of Clarion was Clarion disk libraries, you know, so you know, that was really when we started seeing you know people wanting to back up to disk to augment their existing tape-based uh, backup and recovery processes. But you know, really, it wasn't until you know the the latter part of uh, of the last decade, you know, when we went into two thousand and six, where we made some decisions about getting into deduplication. You know, we saw that as kind of a game changing technology. You know, so the acquisition of Avamar and then uh, Data Domain. You know, we certainly went after those assets to bring them into the portfolio because we were seeing, you know, a insatiable demand for that type of uh, solution. Yeah. So. It's interesting because I remember that after the acquisition of Clarion and I remember many people within EMC saying, hey, we're really going to go after the, the tape business. And it made a lot of sense, but, but tape stayed relatively inexpensive and that yep. gap was pretty, pretty wide until deduplication came, yeah, came I mean, to the fore. I mean, really until deduplication came along, uh, what you would find is that the people that were using disk-based backup were using it as a augmentation to tape. They were keeping backups on disk um, for days, um, at most uh, weeks, 
uh, and then they were creating tapes to retain you know, the backup data longer. It wasn't really until you know we started to sell uh, Avamar and then Data Domain that we really started to see people uh, using backup to disk to retain all of their backup data uh, on disk and quite often replicate it to offsite locations. Yeah, so um, I want to stay on that for a minute and then we'll come back to the market data. So Michael, um, Rob just mentioned you had Avamar, Data Domain, they were actually competitors. You could say quasi-competitors because they were sort of largely different use cases, but it was deduplication and mm -hmm. it was sort of this collision course. Um, so now, you've, now you own Avamar, you own Data Domain, um, you've got Networker, you've got this uh, sea of partners, uh, like Symantec, for instance, uh, that, that is a partner. Um, how do you rationalize all this portfolio? What are, you, what are you telling customers? Well, I think what we're telling customers is that that portfolio really, when you look at it, is a, is a collection of best of breed products and solutions on their own. And, and that's one of the reasons why you know, EMC made those acquisitions. But more importantly, we, you know, we believe those products are, are fundamentally the, the, the building blocks for you know, the architecture that we're going to need for the future. You, you need you know, incredibly uh, high performance, highly scalable backup storage, um, you know, you know, very fast, efficient deduplication that can be deployed everywhere along the data path. Um, you know, software that is, you know, in the case of Avamar, that was really designed from the ground up with disk, uh, and that is you know, ideally suited for virtual environments. So, each of these products has the ability to be deployed separately, but you know, we're tightly integrating them across the board, and so. You know, from our perspective, it allows us to do two things. It, it allows us to meet customer needs, um, you know, with the right solution at the right time. Everybody's not at the same place. And it, you know, it, it pr provides what we believe are the foundational building blocks for the kinds of components that they're going to need going forward. And, and, you know, we haven't, you know, seen all of the transformation. There's a lot more going on beyond just you know, cloud, there's changing roles, there's a lot of, of potential new users and owners of the data in the environment that we're going to need to accommodate as well going forward. So you mentioned tightly integrated. What does it mean to be tightly integrated? Well, tightly integrated essentially means if, you know, if you're an Avamar customer today, you can deploy data domain in that environment or, or you can deploy networker environment. If you're a networker customer, you can deploy either of those two products. I mean, essentially, the customer experience when using the collection of EMC products uh, is relatively seamless. You're, you know, even though you're using what was previously, you know, separate, you know, branded products from companies like Data Domain and Avabar, now when you're buying from EMC, they really operate as a complete end-to-end -end solution. Even though they're different algorithms and it's, sp it, speak different languages? It, it, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, the, from, the ma from a manageability standpoint, we're able to uh, deliver a much uh, a more seamless experience. Um, we're actually able to optimize them, oddly enough, much better than when they're used separately because now we can uh, essentially leverage, you know, the, the, the best of each of those products. You know, a good example is with Avamar and Data Domain. We can, uh, through an Avamar user interface, we can select to do client-side deduplication or uh, deduplication back within the Data Domain system. Um, based on the workload, and so from a customer perspective, those are two products that are really, ide one's ideally suited for, you know, VMware types environments, um, or maybe, you know, file systems. The other is very well suited for, you know, large change rate, heavy workloads, and so we can basically allow our customers to use either one of those. So I have actually called this Stovepipe Central. You, yep. you would say that's unfair. I, I totally think it's unfair. I mean, we, we clearly have separate products, but, you know, our ability to, um, you know, give our customers choice, right? We don't have to always rip and sometimes a customer problem is a very specific pain point mm -hmm. that we can solve there. And, and at that point, we can then form a linchpin, if you will, to continue to, yeah. to redesign and transform their environment. Other customers have the luxury of starting with a clean sheet of paper and we, you know, we can kind of come in with a total disk-based next generation back. I, I mean, since I've been in this business, th there's been an argument about best of breed versus integrated stacks. And, yeah. and what I'm hearing is you can provide both. Yeah, and it's the, the interesting thing, Dave, is that um, you know we actually made some really distinct decisions, you know, after the acquisitions of uh, of certainly Avamar and Data Domain. I mean, let's face it: when we acquired Avamar, you know, we could have done what some of the other vendors in the space did, and we could have simply said, "Let's take this deduplication technology and simply just you know embed it with our long-term franchise of of, of Networker, and, and and really just simply say the only way to get deduplication from EMC is you have to buy into the Networker offering. 
uh, up the offering. But for years, um, Avamar has found itself into all of the backup installed base, whether it be Networker, mm -hmm. whether it be uh, Symantec's installed base, uh, TSM's installed base mm -hmm. with from, from IBM. You know, and that's really you know one of the marked differences is that you can absolutely get an integrated end-to-end -end solution with EMC backup software and EMC backup appliances. But a lot of the time is that a customer may say, I'm looking to replace tape. I, I have a long-term commitment to uh, my backup software, which isn't from EMC. What can you do for me? And we can, we can bring EMC data domain into that environment and immediately start to, to add value to that customer. Often, you know, I'll tell you that a lot of those customers, after a period of time, they then decide, well, why not reduce my, my vendor count? And, and those are times where you see the competitive replacements take place, where a customer goes with EMC backup software to use with their EMC backup appliances. Uh, and you're making an argument that the integration is going to deliver whatever, better performance or mm -hmm. ease of management, which is a smart strategy. I, I want to come back to the market. Stu, can you bring up the uh, market angle slide? Um, so let's start uh, by looking at, uh, this is IDC data. Uh, worldwide purpose-built backup appliance revenue uh, from 2010 to 2015. I, what I like about this slide is it compares IDC's May of 2011 forecast with its December forecast. And you can see just in that short period of time, in six or seven months, the numbers have changed dramatically. So in 2012, IDC is forecasting that the market will be $3.8 billion. That's a forecast. They're saying the, the 2011 actuals were $2.8 billion. Now the entire tape business, I don't think is three billion. No. So here's deduplication and what evolved into purpose-built backup appliances aimed at replacing tape, mm -hmm. you know, the old data domain, tape socks and all that stuff. Um, and now this market is exceeded the entire dollar value of the tape market and, um, and is forecast to grow at 25% per year. Why, Why? What, what more is there? What incremental business was there that we didn't see that obviously somebody saw, but yeah, I, I just, didn't. You know, I just think that um, like any fast moving uh, market that is, uh, that is evolving, it's, it's sometimes difficult when you start to track it to really get a good feeling of, of how rapidly it is, going to, um, it is going to move. And I think that one of the things that you've, that you've seen in, uh, in, in 2011 is, is clearly the demand for uh, purpose-built backup appliances um, has been greater than what, than what was initially forecast, you know, back in May. So that's just a, a six-month time period of, 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 of talking to customers and, 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 and talking to vendors around what they're seeing from the adoption of, of this type of technology. So I think it really does just, does just show that, you know, purpose-built backup appliances are, are solving, you know, customer problems that exist today. And I think a lot of that is around, you know, the, 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 uh, the inevitable, you know, growth that they're having to deal with, and looking for ways to to not have their backup infrastructure compound the growth in their production environment, and deduplicated backup, you know, uh, definitely helps with that. And then I think there's a reality of the shift from physical to virtual um, uh, infrastructure, and you know, customers who are looking for you know better backup infrastructure to help them, you know, protect you know their their virtual infrastructure assets. Now, some of this is pricing, too, right? If I just take IDC's total revenue divided by the total terabyte ship, I get, if I did my math right, I think it was $1,500 a terabyte. That's unduplicated, undeduplicated. Right. Um, so that's a significant premium to tape, which is going to be around, I don't know, what, $40 a terabyte? Now, if I deduplicate it, depending mm -hmm. on the ratio that I get, yep. I don't know, let's use 10 to 1, now I'm down to 150. Yep. It's still, you know, th 3 to 4x, tape but so there's got to be some utility there that customers are seeing is that is that because of the recovery speed is that the real driver or is it something else well, I think it's a few things I think you know I think uh, 10 to 1 deduplication you know we often you know see um, you know it really does to depend on you know the data and the amount of uh, right. retention that you have so we you know tend to look at deduplication rates anywhere between 10 and 30 uh, X is, is kind of the you know the the the, the the numbers so the average is in that range yeah. okay so so I'm being very conservative yep. with with 150 you could you could you could cut that you know in a, in a third get it down to 50 and now you're 50 versus 40 exactly relative to tape yeah so that's you know that's certainly one of them uh, you know but but acquisition cost is only is only one part of the equation mm -hmm. you know I think when you start looking at the uh, the tape management processes and especially when you start looking at 
or what you're going to do with your tapes after you've created them, uh, where you're going to store them, how you're going to transport them there, you know, and, and the processes and the procedures that you have in place to do that. You know, a lot of the, um, the reality that, that when customers go with purpose-built backup appliances, probably 80% of them uh, implement replication. You know, so you know, when you replicate deduplicated storage for the purposes of getting your backup somewhere else, you remove all of that tape handling uh, cost as well. So you know, that's a soft cost that, well, actually probably more of a hard cost, you know, which, which is more than just the acquisition of the actual tape infrastructure itself. And then I think you've got just the risk profile. I mm -hmm. think that, that customers have you know, less tolerance uh, to, for risk now than they've had, ever had in the past. And I think that moving to a disk-based infrastructure for your backup and recovery uh, environment takes a lot of that risk off the table. So Michael, the big theme of, of EMC World coming up in May is transformation. Um, you guys have been transforming the backup process for a while. Uh, at the same time, sometimes people hear transformation, they think of rip and replace. The, so talk a little bit about rip and replace versus if I want to use my same backup processes, what are you seeing in the context of transformation? Well, that's a, a, a difficult question to answer because it's, it, you know, the customers are in so many, you know, different places in terms of their overall, you know, not only goals, but where they're on that, that so-called transformational path. I mean, what, you know, what we see is probably the biggest driver is really, you know, first virtualization and be able to support those environments. And now, you know, looking at sort of cloud deployments as something that um, is sort of the next logical step. Well, now that I can protect my virtual environment, you know, how do I begin to deliver cloud type services? So, um, you know, what we're starting to see from customers is really, you know, help me, um, help me evolve. You know, what the last thing a customer wants is that that, you know, that backup infrastructure becomes something that holds them back or slows them down. And, and we've seen evidence, you know, we all know that virtualized environments um, have some unique um, requirements in terms of protecting them. And, you know, trying to protect those environments with uh, backup solutions that aren't really ideally suited or, you know, sort of designed for that, at some point will begin to s slow you down. It'll become the, the kind of the anchor that keeps you from moving forward. So, you know, what I think what we want to see is customers, you know, they, they, wa they want to evolve. They understand backup's part of that transformation. It's part of the bigger IT picture. Um, they don't want the backup process to take on an inordinate amount of, you know, importance and time, uh, it, but they they also don't want it to be the thing that sort of slows them down. So anything that we can help our customers with in terms of kind of moving at the pace that they intended to move is, is really where, we, we, you know, we think we've got great solutions. Again, because we can offer, you know, multiple approaches to solve a particular problem. Now, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, you, when you're talking about Avamar, you, you talked about it in the context of virtualization. Is that the primary platform that you lead with in a virtualized environment or not necessarily? No, Avamar is our, our lead solution for backup and recovery of VMware. Um, you know, one of the things, and it has been for a few years, one of the, um, the additional um, uh, use cases that we have in uh, protecting virtualized environments is we recognize that uh, customers are starting to move more of their mission critical applications you know, and, and larger scale applications into, yep. you know, VMware environments. And, and really, um, Avamar was, um, you know, was really designed, you know, to handle, you know, large numbers of files um, as opposed to small numbers of files that were large in size. So that was really one of the driving factors mm -hmm. for integrating the Avamar software uh, uh, capabilities and allowing you to back up to data domain. So what we enabled with that, you know, change last year is that when you're backing up um, workloads that are more suited to be backed up to data domain as opposed to uh, an Avamar data store, is that you simply make that selection within the Avamar software. So whether it be Oracle that you might be virtualizing or Exchange or SQL or SharePoint, those are all typical workloads that we would say um, if the size of the database or the application uh, warrants it, then simply turn on the ability to back up to a data domain appliance and get the best of both worlds. Yeah, okay, so you're having your cake and eat it too there. You get the client side back up, which we haven't really talked about this, but the, the challenge in virtualized environments is you don't have as many physical resources to do, do backup. It's great because servers are underutilized, so we consolidate, utilization goes up, but the problem is the one application where servers weren't underutilized was backup, because yeah. it's a pig, it's a big giant job. And so, as a result, a lot of customers are finding that their backup windows are really stressed in virtualized environments. 
uh, uh, products like Avamar, which give client side uh, uh, deduplication, yeah. minimize the IO traffic yeah. and, and tr address that problem. Now you're saying you can also select a target that's a big pipe exactly. as well. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's really been the, um, uh, the, the, the biggest benefit of Avamar for VMware, and it really has become the, the, the main use case of Avamar. You know, obviously we support other environments and we support physical type workloads, I mean specifically things like NAS environments or remote office, branch office environments, but in the VMware environment, you know, the ability to, uh, to use the duplication to reduce the, the resource constraints that exist in that environment and give you the ability to do both guest level backups, which um, you know, a lot of customers like to do because they understand it. They treat their virtual machines as, the, as if they were physical machines. But of course, without the duplication running in the clients, uh, you get these resource constraints. You just don't have enough resources available to you. Avamar takes those resource constraints off the table, so it allows you to do that. And that allows you to get things like application consistent backups, you know, by running backup agents that understand the applications. But one of the things that a lot of clients want is, how can I back up my virtual machines without putting an agent? Mm. Um, especially for those virtual machines that don't have, you know, transactional applications that need to be kept in a very consistent fashion. You know, so there, yeah, image, it. Yeah, yeah, right. um, image level backup and recovery, mm. you know, using the vSTORE storage APIs that VMware introduced, you know, with vSphere 4, you know, give you that ability to integrate Avamar in very tightly with VMware. So that has really become an area where we've put a lot of focus on. Yeah, and change block tracking is yep. starting to really, you know, catch on in the marketplace. Yep. All right, um, I want to go back to the market data. Stu, can we bring up the um, competitive angle here? And let's talk about that. And let's talk about the comp. We love to talk about the competition because <laughs> your customers are making choices. Uh, this is just amazing to me. This is 2010 data, <clears throat> shows the market size at uh, 1.6, uh, 1.7 billion. It's grown substantially since then. Look at <clears throat> EMC share is uh, over 64 percent, and you've held that. <clears throat> excuse me. So this is uh, IDC's forecast, uh, actual data rather. Mm -hmm. um, they think they published this report in December, and it shows the first half. Uh, they, they're not of, of 2011. They're not going to publish the full 2011 until May. We talked to Rob Amatruda, invited Rob on the Cube. Rob, come on anytime. He's a good friend. Love to have you. Um, but so traveling a lot like crazy. So we're just going to curate this study. 62% market share in the first half of 2011. Mm -hmm. So, and your closest competitor, IBM, has a 21% well, share. So you got more than 20 points of market share ahead of the competition. So, Sorry, 40 points, I said 20, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how is it that you've been able to um, achieve this? Well, we know that a lot of that was through acquisition, yeah. but how have you been able to maintain that share and is it sustainable? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that, that, that people don't you know, always realize about EMC is, is, is how, um, how important backup and recovery is you know, within the company. And, and one of the things that, that, um, that, that people may not realize is that you know, we, we actually have a, a specialized sales force that all they do when they come into work each day is they, they, they look at working with customers to you know, solve backup and recovery problems. You know, and that, that, um, uh, that specialized sales force you know, is, is both sales account reps and, and you know, SEs and, and, and consultants. So you know, really a lot of our ability to, uh, to take our products, because clearly you know, the products you know, have, to, have to do what they say they're going to do, but then you have to get those products uh, and introduce them to the customers that have the problems. So one of the things I think we've been able to do is, is both with the EMC sales force, um, you know, which includes this specialized body of individuals that focus on backup and recovery, you know, working, you know, both directly and just as importantly through the Velocity Channel program and the indirect, you know, partners that we have that are also taking this to the market, is we have a lot of people taking our products to the customers. And I think that has really allowed, you know, I think the success that we've had and the customer references that we've built to really sort of have a snowball's effect. And, and, and really continue to allow us to continue to get these solutions to our customers and help them transform their backups. I mean, it's really quite astounding. Um, as I said in my, my intro, it's your share in backup is about double what your share is in your core disk business. And mm -hmm. EMC's, you know, good, great disk salespeople and yep. very well known. So do you think this is sustainable? I think a lot of it is, is just that um, right at the moment, and, and certainly when, you, when we look to the market forecast, is the 
the the customers are demanding these types of solutions and and certainly there's still a lot of customers that uh, in the enterprise even that 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 haven't got deduplicated backup appliances you know in production you have a lot of people that you know if you ask them the question you know are you using or do you plan to use deduplicated backup you know the answers are very high but you know at the moment you know we've still got a lot of people that that have a lot of tape um, in uh, even, uh, believe it or not, as their primary backup and recovery technology. There are still enterprises that we, that we meet with on a day-to-day -day basis that still say, yeah, we, we really don't back up to disk in any sort of big way. The majority of our, of our backup targets are, are tape. So really until kind of that market you know, moves over to all be using deduplicated backup solutions, you know, that market is going to continue to grow. So, you know, whether or not it slows down, I think, uh, in the out years from where we are now, but certainly at the moment, you know, a lot of it is is just, you know, being able to ship and being able to, to get with customers, you know, that are, you know, knocking on the door and, and, and asking for help us transform our backup and recovery environment. Yeah, Slootman always made that point that this market was underpenetrated. I think he would he would cite data from Gartner. I don't know if it was Dave Russell or not. It was probably Russell, but... Yep. Um, that that he would say Russell that is would say that that a, a minority of their customers are actually doing disk based backup, yeah. which always you know intrigued me. Yeah. Um, so again, there's this price premium that people are paying because of the value, and with replication, there's additional value that's going into this marketplace. Which, again, I personally didn't didn't forecast. Um, but backup it was the number one is always been the number one problem for IT practitioners, and and that really hasn't changed. Um, okay, what about, um, let me stay on the competition for a little bit, because IBM obviously with Tivoli has some good software, got strong services capabilities, they're, it's hard to say they're catching up, but they're at least on the chart in double digits. HP has come out and made some pretty aggressive claims mm -hmm. um, with store once, uh, basically focusing on things like high, availab high availability and uh, restore performance. Um, so how do you respond to some of those uh, 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 claims that of higher performance and better availability and things of that nature? What do you? How do you respond? Yeah, I mean it's interesting. I think that um, you know one of the reasons why you know we really went after Data Domain is because we we really saw their technology was was going to be able to uh, you know to scale and 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 change and keep up with the performance that was needed and a lot of the reasons for that you know is the it's the unique way that we leverage you know the intel cpu architecture you know to handle the deduplication mm. algorithms that we run you know so we don't rely on 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 disk spindles in order to drive performance this is all you know uh, intel compute horsepower you know um, built into the emc back appliances you know so over the last couple of years I mean, the, the performance increases and the scalability increases that we've done within the data domain product line specifically have been tremendous. I mean, the, the, the largest deduplication appliance today is, is close to 30 terabytes an hour performance and you know, half a petabyte of usable capacity. And what we found with, with some of the competitors is you know, they've got very good at mathematics because a lot of what we've seen with the competitors is, is they've really been looking at you know, um, how, you, how you take um, um, multiple appliances and rack and stack them together, you know, and then, you know, add up the performance of each one, you know, and, and put that out as your top end performance number. And that's really not uh, comparing apples to apples. I mean, really, the, you have to look at the, the, the building block performance and scalability and how many building blocks it takes to build a solution. And I think one of the things that we found is that data domain in the enterprise that invariably tends to be the environments that require the highest levels of performance, you know, really get that through um, you know, the smallest number of, of moving parts. And it isn't from a combination of, of smaller appliances that you rack and stack together. You know, and I think that's one of the, one of the marked differences you know, that we tend to find with you know, some of the competitive solutions that are out there. Michael, one of the things that we've been tracking here at Wikibon and you know, Stu Miniman's really his area of expertise, I've written about this, is the whole convergence, converge infrastructure, you know, the VCE, servers and storage and networking coming together, um, and virtualization, obviously. Uh, how has that affected uh, the backup 
portfolio. Are you seeing drag in, in that? Is that a ma I mean, it's obviously a major trend because a lot of people are doing it. We've seen VCE now numbers are being reported on EMC's 10K. You kind of, kind of slipped that in there. Um, Joe talked on the call of a, a, a billion dollar, uh, or $800 billion backlog, or run rate rather. Um, is it affecting backup? Is it visible? Uh, you know, I, I think we definitely see convergence in backup. You know, certainly, um, you know, we see drag from VCE uh, and that type of convergence. But, you know, if the question is, are we seeing convergence on the backup side of things, you know, we, we definitely do. And I think one of, the, one of the trends that we are seeing that's really a, a kind of an underlying shift in the ecosystem is that, you know, you're getting today, you know, different... Uh, you know, data owners uh, in the environment, people that, you know, you have VMware administrators, you have, um, you have uh, application owners, Oracle DBs, and storage administrators, and of course your traditional backup administrator. Because we've now gone to, you know, disk becomes so readily available for backing up, a lot of these people, you know, have the ability because they have the tools within their, their, uh, their the data um, application uh, to, to begin to do some of their own data protection. They don't have to go talk to the backup guy to, you know, get to the tape. So they can find some disk and start doing their own backup. And so one of the things that, that has the potential, I mean, it's good for the data owners, they get some control and they're looking for that, but it has the potential to, to begin to splinter or create new silos across the organization. And so now, you know, where you had sort of a central backup administrator, you have people going off and doing their own things. And so, you know, we believe that the, the EMC backup and recovery portfolio uh, can actually help provide some of that converged infrastructure on the back end to accommodate all those new data users who, who may be using different tools than a traditional backup application, but at the same time, you want to be able to provide some sort of centralized point of control and management so that, you know, when the question is asked, are, are you protecting your data, are you meeting your SLAs, you can actually assure that because otherwise you really don't know what's going on. So we, we do see an increasing importance of, of convergence of the, of the backup storage um, along with the software that manages that storage and the software uh, and the ways that you interact with the data sources. Because in, in all cases, may not be a traditional backup agent. It may be a utility. Uh, you know, it may, it may be, uh, you know, snap and replicate in, in, a, in a storage array. So we do see that convergence. Yeah, and you're, you're talking about convergence of the organizational roles as well. So. Absolutely. Um, a couple years ago, might have been even three years ago now, I saw a presentation at an EMC World, anyway, two or three years ago, um, where the speaker was putting forth a vision of uh, data deduplication technology everywhere, uh, primary, secondary, all throughout the uh, I.O. infrastructure, the storage infrastructure. And the vision was we're going to move around data without having to rehydrate. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, wow, that's a, that's a great vision. Um, is that still a valid vision? Is that something that you're putting forth? Is that something that could happen in our lifetimes? Or is that a pipe dream? No, I mean, it's still, it's still an area of, um, of, of investigation. Uh, you know, with you know across the you know the different storage groups that um, you know that we have inside of EMC. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly you know that you know we introduced you know deduplication um, into primary storage initially with Solera. Right. You know, and then that followed through with uh, deduplication for uh, the the VNX platforms, specifically you know in the the VNX um, you know uh, files you know based. Uh, Based storage, you know, and and you know, I think one of the things that uh, that you may know is that you know we leveraged uh, a, a lot of the deduplication algorithms and the compression techniques that we'd actually acquired through you know the acquisition of both Avamar and RecoverPoint. Right. You know, so so certainly the the um, uh, the the combination of both primary storage uh, with backup infrastructure and how we can optimize the the data flow between uh, one and the other. You know, it's definitely an area of, of focus and investigation for us, and and certainly, you know, one of the areas where you know we want to, uh, you know, to, to look at is is how can we bring you know a more seamless mechanism for protecting you know primary storage that is running um, the primary data that is running on EMC storage, um, and more seamlessly protect that with you know EMC backup appliances. You know, and do it in a way that you, know, you actually simplify the workflow and simplify you know, where the data has to go from the primary environment to the, 
from the, to the back of infrastructure. So you know, certainly from you know all of the uh, you know the CTO groups, with either in the the backup part of the organization, you know, and the primary storage part of the, of the organization. I mean, they're all working to look at you know how can we take advantage of all of the technology that we've you know acquired over the years and actually blend it into much more of a converged solution. Yeah, because you're you're definitely seeing I mean, the primary discussion is interesting. So you're certainly not ruling that out. In fact, you're saying that you got your best people working on it, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, and you're seeing some of the startups, in particularly in the flash area, embed deduplication into their flash as a way to do to disk what what data domain and Avamar have done to, to tape. And it's sort of an interesting dynamic. I'm sure you know EMC's VF cache is you know part of that trend as well. So. So I think that's an interesting vision that was put forth by that speaker at EMC World, and, and I, for one, would be uh, very excited to see it. Um, I know it's not trivial, yep. but uh, that's good. All right, gentlemen, well, listen, thanks very much for coming in and talking yeah. about uh, the portfolio. Uh, you know, EMC's lead is very clear, number one, it's hard to find a storage market where there's this much domination. I think Joe Tucci on the last earnings call said that uh, the – the BRS business was running at a $2 billion run rate, is that right? Or Yeah, the, uh, the Dayton Domain and Avamar uh, parts of our backup portfolio, you know, exited, you know, 2011 with a, you know, $2 billion run rate. Just those two assets, not, not including any uh, services, not including uh, uh, Networker? Uh, certainly not including Networker, but, okay. but the Dayton Domain and Avamar businesses of, of product and services. Product and services, okay, yeah. but no, no Networker software in there, just the Avamar software. Correct. It's a good number. So um, again, you know, at the time, 2009, height of the uh, the downturn where cash was king, EMC put out 2.4 billion in cash, and I went, wow, that's a lot of dough at, at a time when cash is so precious. But clearly, the company saw an ROI. Um, I think made a good call and uh, has put EMC on a growth path, particularly for this part of the business. Uh, so, Rob and Michael, thanks very much for coming inside the Cube. It was great to see you guys Thank again. You. Thanks, Dave. And uh, we'll see you around the block. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon headquarters in Marlboro. And we will see you next time.